coming up with a list of top five celebrities you irrationally hate who haven't done something bad was mm-hmm. difficult to do because so many celebrities have done stuff now or stuff's come out. You're like, oh, so I was right to hate that guy. Right. Fair. Yeah. No, that's reasonable. Okay. Well, hey, everyone. Uh, this is Cash's Top 5, and my guest today is the lovely Nikki Reed from the Smiley Morning Show from Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, Nikki, please uh, introduce yourself. Tell us about yourself. What do, what do you got going on? Oh, God. Oh, nothing. Life's pretty normal. <laughs> Everything's normal fine. Um, <laughs> so I am uh, in Indianapolis from Michigan originally. Uh, came here for college, the University of Indianapolis, and ended up in radio did it all over the place, blah, blah, blah. And uh, now I'm doing the Smiley Morning Show on WZPL. Um, Currently in 2020, uh, met a guy, got engaged. I'm trying to sell a house. I moved to a new city and like a smaller part of Indianapolis, like a burb, Mm. a real country ass burb. And then, (laughs) um, uh, yeah, I think those are the big things. Oh, and and acquired three uh, soon to be stepchildren. From a life oh. of no children. Wow. And a cat. That's a big change for you. Oh, huge change. Yeah. So you don't have a lot going on. That's <laughs> no, nothing's of, really, it's nothing. It's fine. I'm drinking in the middle of the afternoon. Everything. <laughs> I think that's allowed when you're on a morning show. Cause when you wake up at 3 a.m., this is kind of your, it's your like six 7 o'clock. It's p.m. for me already. Yeah. Uh, well, before we get started, I also want to say thank you. Cause you're kind of the reason that I got into radio. Uh, oh, I'm on air here in Pensacola. Uh, I started off writing jokes for your afternoon show when you were on uh, three to seven, the drive time slot. And you were gracious enough to allow me to pester you and annoy you and bug you with, Hey, do you think this is funny? And you (laughs) you'd use my joke sometimes in your Nikki's quickies, your little pop culture. Clinton on from time to time. (laughs) Oh, that's right. And I did voice. Oh man. How do you, why are we friends? (laughs) I'd call him like, hey, I can do an impression. You're like, I guess that's kind of sounds like that guy. But uh, anyway, I always love that uh, we have that connection. So we've done stand-up shows together. We've mm-hmm. hung out countless times. You're a great friend. And I wanted you to be on one of the first episodes of the top five list because it's not like just top five movies. It's not just top five songs. Like we'll get to those eventually. But I want the the more specific and the more kind of almost even mundane top five lists are funny to me because why would you argue that? Uh, And you came up with a great one for today. It's top five celebrities that by all accounts are nice people and have done nothing wrong, but you still hate them Mm -hmm. uh, for some reason. So, which is a great list. Uh, It took me a while. i now have some honorable mentions uh, in addition to my top five. So let's get started. Uh, What, who is in your number five uh, slot? Number fly, five slot, um, the Property Brothers on HGTV. Yeah. They have done nothing wrong and they're successful. I think I just feel like because they're tall, dark, and handsome and twins. Handsome? I, well, okay. I, don't I mean, I'll be mean. I don't care. I'm a guy. I think they're, I think they're <laughs> handsome like the way Tom Brady is supposed to be handsome. You know what I'm saying? Where everyone's like, on paper, he's good looking. I think like that's how I feel about the property okay. brothers. Yeah, it's the Hillary Swank argument from The Office. Like she's yes. attractive, but she's not hot. Right. Symmetrical. They are symmetrical. But. But. Yeah. So, but then I just find it to be like, like that's supposed to be enough for me. Like they're <laughs> twins and they're symmetrical. Like. Where, like, I'm missing a personality there that they, I feel like other people see that I don't. That's fair. Like, uh, their now, stick is just tall twins. Does adult, do adult twins freak you out a little? Because normally twins as kids, that's cute. But adult twins, you're kind of on it's circus bordering. Wait, what'd you say? I, well, like, adult twins isn't cute anymore. I think you're Yeah, right. it's not. Think, it's not enough. Now, I will say that the Property Brothers were my number one honorable mention. <laughs> they didn't make the top, they were on the top five before I remembered somebody. 
Mm -hmm. uh, specifically Jonathan Scott of the Property Brothers, because he met, uh, they did sibling carpool karaoke last year. It was the Property Brothers and the Deschanel sisters. And then Zoe Deschanel and Jonathan Scott met and fell in love on the set and she left her husband for him. So now no. he, he has Zoe Deschanel. So now he wow. needs to die. Yeah, she's great. That's, I really that's like my, her. my girl. <laughs> Sorry, my dog just jumped off the couch and took oh. my entire computer with him. Hey, Marbles. <laughs> my Hi, anyway, buddy. Go on. <laughs> Okay, so your number five is Property Brothers. That was going to be my number five. They were my first honorable mention. So, uh, okay, my number five for you, celebrity I irrationally hate, but probably shouldn't, is Jenna Fisher. Oh, okay. Tell me more. So we, we talked about this a little bit before uh, we started recording, but, you know, I want to make sure I go into this and have proper reasons to hate people. You know, I don't want to be a misogynist. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to hate a specific group just because they're a specific group. So mm -hmm. this isn't a woman hating thing, but it's impossible for me to disassociate her from Pam from the office, mm -hmm. who is probably my most hated TV character of all time. Jim should have ended up with Karen. Pam's the worst. She's a terrible person. And why do you think she's terrible? Because I don't disagree about the Pam thing. I find her to be boring. Ugh. But I don't know the terrible part I'm curious about. So I always get the vibe that she's always kind of put out unless she gets her way. Like she's kind of rotten princess kind of. Okay. Uh, I think she's hypocritical. And uh, I gener I have a genuine distaste for anybody that's a wet blanket. Someone in which she has carried over to other characters, which leads me to believe that she might have a level of that in her personality. Mm -hmm. You know, like, mm -hmm. like Timothy Oliphant's one of my favorite actors. He's kind of that quirky guy in every character he does. He kind of brings a level of that to everything. She's always got kind of a, okay, kids, slow down. Like, shut yeah. up. Man. Like there's a wet blanket, stick in the mud, never lets loose kind of vibe. And I just don't care for it. I feel like too with the office, like we were all supposed to be like, we're the Pam, like as women, it was like, well, we're the Pam. And I always was like, boo, no, like, <laughs> boo. I guess I was with you. Like I wanted a Karen or a Meredith. Like I wanted that, or Kelly, give me something that sparks, you know? And Pam was just like, great, a new card again. Like thumbs down. Yeah. So boring. Okay. So that's my number five. All right. Your turn. Who do you have? Uh, who do you have for number four? Okay. This one, and this one makes me feel bad because I recently heard a comedian like go to the task on people who don't care for this person. And I felt bad about it. So I would just like to say, I want to recognize his charitable contributions, mm -hmm. but Guy Fieri, I can't with that guy. He is a cartoon of a human being. He's a cartoon. And I have this drinking game that I play called take a drink for every accessory he's wearing, you'll be tanked by the second half of Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives, which is a show I really enjoy. But yeah. God with that man and his cartoonness. So is it the innate cartoonness that you don't like or is it his specific brand of cartoon? Because there's lots of cartoony type people. It's his but... specific brand because it's nonsense. It's <laughs> not like, like there are people, like I think an example is like, okay, Johnny Depp has like the, I look like I never showered too many necklaces look and like that's his thing, but it flows, right? Guy Fieri is like anything that Hot Topic sold 10 years ago, I'm putting it on. And then I'm doing, I'm paying a person to dye this strip on my chin beard, this color and these things that like I'm paying someone for that. And at no point because I'm on TV, did anyone say, stop it. Okay. I can see that. Now, does it bother you? Because I will make the argument that like your Johnny Depp, your Jared Leto types, who I think accessorize more than Guy does, is it because they're A, better looking overall, or the fact that they're wearing more fashionable accessories and his looks like he got it at Kmart? Like, does that bother you? I, it's possible that the fashion element helps. I don't think it's the better looking thing because I don't tend to find people like Johnny Depp, like the longer haired greasy guy thing is not really my style. 
You've always I been like the more buff lumberjack capable. I tend to go, yeah, you know, and a little more clean cut. I like bigger dudes. I don't want yeah. like a skinny, emaciated, like it's just not my style. So on God behalf Mary, of big dudes everywhere, I just want to say we appreciate you. Thank you for your contributions. <laughs> he has like the ability to be in the category of like, wh what is our language level on this show, by the way? Do your thing. Uh, like, you know, I'd hit it if he like, if he was within reason of a human being. It's just that he's not, <laughs> he's a cartoon. Okay. Uh, so Shane Torres uh, on Conan made you feel terrible about yes. how you feel. That's a great thing. Because I by heard the way. that and I was like, I am one of those people and I deserve this. I deserve the shame. Because he's like, Guy Fieri, all he does is these charity things and these charity things. And he gives all his money to this. And I was like, it's so nice. He's such, he's probably the best person. Well, then that's the thing. Everybody on both of our lists is probably great and, mm -hmm. and contributes to charities and, and whatever, yeah. but it's irrational hatred. It's, hatred. it's why it exists. So, okay. Your number five is Property Brothers. Your number four is Guy Fieri. Uh, my number four for you, and I have a feeling you, this will be the one you don't like. Out of everybody on my list, this will be the one that maybe makes you mad. Uh, Chelsea Handler interesting okay tell me more i don't okay so here's the problem if it were just her i there's just something about her face that i don't like okay like that's probably more animal dna there's just something i don't like about that mm -hmm. person i don't care for her shitty dismissive brand of comedy and the way her she has very specific mannerisms and how she talks that's one thing but she spawned an entire generation of young females who kind of copy that, uh -huh. that kind of have that kind of little like trail off kind of upspeak and then like kind of the, the vocal okay. fry and how they deliver their joke. Like, ugh, the fact that okay. she was amplified by everybody copying her drove me fucking nuts. So uh -huh. yeah, it's, I don't want to be the guy that's like, oh, female comic. They're not like, no, nah, I love lots of female comics. Her specific personality no, thank you. So I tend to like her, but I would always like, if she were my friend, what I always picture it to be is like, she's the girl that everyone's like, oh, she's coming because last time she said this and you go, okay, I know she's a little much sometimes, but she really is really funny. And like, she's actually really nice, but you would have to explain away about a third of the things she says and does because they're like you a yeah. third of the things she says and does i'm like jesus but yeah. then i like the other half part of it so i'm like all right well <laughs> yeah no th that there is something to be said for the apology friend because we all have apology friends and they're usually really great people but the fact that they're not one size fits all that gets to be annoying like God, i really want to invite Devin, but he's not you know I know he'll piss off Jack, so I can't invite, you know. Right. Chelsea can't come because she called the host of the party a twat waffle last time. And now that she can't come. Yeah, we can kind of lump Whitney Cummings into that. And then, now I don't Where? I don't want to, again, this isn't a female comic thing. This is just their very specific brand of personality. So, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, on to the next one. That was the one I was worried you're going to give me some shit for, actually. No, only because I can understand it. Though That's I fair. would disagree, I can understand it. Okay. This is another one I feel like my third one or my, I guess my third mm -hmm. would be in, I would put it in a Pam category situation. And again, I know that this person is probably the nicest human being, <laughs> but I watch a lot of like, like cooking channel type stuff. The pioneer woman, Ree Drummond, the redhead. Oh man, really? It's like listening to a child's storybook that I don't want to listen to. Her <laughs> recipes are cool. I like watching her cook, but she's like, my hungry man on the farm. And I'm like, shut up. Shut up. Like, just <laughs> have a person. Like, barefoot contestant. That lady's like, I like to drink. And my husband touches my butt. And I love it. Like, that to me is human. But Ree is like, <laughs> like, I don't know if it's so syrupy. I feel like I get diabetes watching it. Well, you'll get lots of uh, health problems watching that. When I see her dump an entire pan of mac and cheese that's full of whole milk and butter and all that stuff, 
Uh, so does it bother you? Like, I totally get what you're saying. Does it bother you because you think it's a fake, phony down homeness? Yeah, yes. I, like, do, I do believe she's sweet and nice. I really do think that part of her personality is real. But I think the the down home country thing is such a put on. And it very well could be producers telling her to do that or whatever. And not because she's not from the country or whatever, but like, it's so overkill. It's It seems absolutely inauthentic. Versus wow. I, I feel like I've watched so many other of those cooking shows where like the people are themselves and maybe a more trumped up version or whatever, but like, mm -hmm. come on lady. <laughs> I think we're going to be able to tell what channels we both watch a lot of when we've got <laughs> property brothers, pioneer woman, Guy Fieri, Chelsea <laughs> Handler. Like these are very, we're both on the same cooking channel. HGTV Cable type. channel specific hatred, maybe. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, I think, yeah, I've got a couple that aren't along that line, but definitely uh, our first few are like that. That's funny, man. I would have never thought of that. Uh, the pioneer woman. I know a lot of people hate Bobby Flay and he's like my favorite dude ever. I don't mind Bobby Flay. He's a little Huge biting, fan. but I don't mind it. I don't yeah. know. I, I would um, prefer a polarizing personality <laughs> than a nothing personality. And I feel like Ree is that. I'll give you that. That's a really good point. You, cause you always, it, it's always good when you have a good villain. Like yes. a, a movie is only as good as its villain. If you have just kind of a meh, then you got a meh movie. Same with exactly. the same with the TV show. Well, it's like in Radio Art by Boss JR always says, if they're not calling us complaining about you or praising you, then you're doing a bad job because you're you're hitting them in some regard. But if they don't even notice you, you're doing a bad job in radio. It's a good point. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so my number three is you mentioned him earlier actually and it's a very personal hatred i didn't put him number one although i could have um when i was a younger guy even into my 20s i was still emotionally connected to sports mm -hmm. and i've been able to kind of back off of that a bit as i've gotten older i just don't care as much <laughs> as i've gotten older i'm 32 whatever um so i only allowed myself one athlete on okay. my list and it's tom brady that's my number yeah. three. Uh, yeah. Some of it's jealousy, you know, to be that good looking, that successful. Uh, Is he good looking? No, again, I feel like that court reporter drawer person actually did a really good job. <laughs> Where he looked God, like a, a weird looking <laughs> emaciated caveman or whatever. Right, like a Frankenstein. Like it's not, I don't actually think he's cute. Uh, well, I mean, that's fair. I know there are lots of, uh, women and, and men who do find him attractive. Uh, so I just assume he also pulled Giselle Bunchen, the model. Now his $300 million probably has something to do with that being a quarterback a in the NFL. Package, star I athlete. But I would, if he was walking down the street, you'd notice he was big and muscly, but I don't know that I'd look at that face and be like, oh, stunner. He's not even that big and muscly. You're right. He's like a kind of a skinny guy. But yeah. uh, the thing that I hate more so than the fact that he beat the Colts so many times uh, mm -hmm. in his Patriot days is the, the bullshit boy next door, aw shucks, gee golly act mm -hmm. that he puts on like, like that. Cause I understand by all accounts, I've always heard he's like a genuinely a nice guy. Like he's a, he's not putting on airs. He is genuinely down home guy next door, whatever. But when you're that successful at your career and you still come out like, you know, they've they've always counted us out. They've never given us the benefit of the doubt. They've always I'm like, dude, you're not the underdog. Nobody's counting you're you out. Not. Nobody's talking like you're the king of the sport for the past you know decade and a half. I don't love fake phoniness like that. And I genuinely yep. don't like the East Coast. I don't like Boston accents. They make me violent when I hear them. <laughs> so you can make this a Mark Wahlberg thing. You can make this a Ben Affleck thing, just Boston, New England. Tom Brady can represent all that, and I hate them all. Fair enough. No, I completely understand that. And I do think, yeah, he definitely played the victim when there was absolutely no part of him that should have been that. Ugh. Yeah. All right. So, okay, we've got Property Brothers, Guy Fieri, Pioneer Woman. I have, I've been trying to guess who would be on your top five list, and I've been way Bad. off on everything so at number two who do you have i'm gonna go to hell for the next two i really am it's bad um <laughs> good my number two is kelly clarkson i know what here's the thing too 
I wish her all the success in the world. I sure. want her to do well. I really do. But there is just something meh about her. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I think part of my problem is? And I think it's, again, it's it's the, the personality dissipated a little bit for me. I felt like the, the second album after the American Idol stuff was all done, when she was angry Kelly Clarkson for a hot minute, mm -hmm. I loved that Kelly Clarkson. I was like, get it! Like, sing those songs! And it felt like she was like, Ugh! And then <laughs> it just felt like she was like, just kidding, y'all. I'm country, never mind. And it was like, what? hey, you get back here and you do this and you get <laughs> mad and you sing those songs. And it just felt like, and maybe she was probably who she was all along, but I just found it to be way uninteresting then. Really? So I know. that's, wow. I mean, I'm not mad at the pick. I'm just surprised. I'm surprised too. It's not her fault. <laughs> she didn't do anything wrong. Well, and the fact that you're so angry at meh, like it goes back to you want polar, you want polarizing and she's not. I do. She's, she's not. very down the middle. Yes. And, and I've even heard stories about how she's the nicest person on the planet. So like, and I feel bad that, you know, the American Idol stuff is probably really crappy and hard for her, <laughs> like to be under the thumb of that. And then she's going through a divorce, like poor thing. It's gotta be hard to be Kelly Clarkson. And here I am hating on her for absolutely no reason. But that, I just- That's really funny. Thing and it's not. I've always, it's, it's interesting because I've always thought of her to be a fake star. Uh, like, and it's weird because Carrie Underwood has become what she's become. But I'm like, you want American Idol. You want a reality show. You're not a star. But like, Carrie Underwood came out of American Idol and grabbed star by the balls and was like, it's mine. And it was awesome. Yeah, I know. I, exactly. And so, but I feel like she's probably the only one to have done that. Like, if you go back and look at all the winners and, uh, you know, there's maybe a handful and Kelly Clarkson obviously has had lots of success, but I've always in the back of my mind, like, nah, you're not, you're not legit. You want it on a, you won through a TV show and you've just kind of hung around and every once in a while you'd have a song like she had it. Nobody wants it to be 2007 again, more than Kelly Clarkson, because that yeah. was when she was, when she was your angry, uh, said you been gone? like that whole, yes. yeah. Like it was good and it was interesting and it was fun. And she was still that personality, but the music was like, hell yeah. And now it's just like, like the TV show, I tried to watch the TV show and it was like pulling out teeth to make yeah. it interesting. Like it was brutal. Well, and the brand, so it's all about branding obviously. And clearly she's not just her, it's all of them. They're going to pivot to what is going to work and what's okay. going to make money. And she pivoted into, I'm going to be another version of Rachel Ray or Paula Deen or Ellen. I'm going to be the one that I'm going to appeal to 45 year old moms. That's what this, I'm, I'm country y'all. And I like macaroni too thing. And it's like, <laughs> all right, but what else? Like what? That's not yeah. a personality country is not a personality like you can be country and also a person right yeah no i agree with that it's like people who think craft beer is a personality like it's not like you have to be <laughs> something else too yeah uh that's really funny i don't know <laughs> that you could have a more different list i'm so excited to see who your number one is uh okay so uh I've had Jenna Fisher, Chelsea Handler, Tom Brady. My number two, uh, we're doing a list of most irrationally hated celebrities. By all accounts, probably decent people, but we hate them anyway. My number two is Seth Rogen. Ooh. Yeah. And this one's going to have a lot of haterade attached to it. I get okay. that. Uh, but man can't stand that dude tell me more i need to i need to understand i have never there's gonna be some hypocrisy in this too but i've never loved stoner humor ever like okay weed movies don't make me laugh although i will say i i thought pineapple express was funny 
It was funny. Uh, it's a great movie, but there's just something about the the slacker stoner never really tries has potential but doesn't want to reach for it. like the the nick miller character in new girl like i can't stand dudes like that mm-hmm. if you have potential fucking go for it and be successful don't the whole oh, it's the world you know it has kept me down or whatever there's just a there's a stink of that i also can't stand his voice or his laugh okay uh, the, the laugh uh, is pretty yeah. hideous so i can understand that and he uses it to punctuate almost every sentence, like, da, 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 da. <laughs> <You know? laughs> dude, sh- you got to stop. You have mm-hmm. to stop. So part of the, I think the hate rate is jealousy. Like he's a, a kind of a schlubby guy that, you know, uh, has made it. And it's like, dude, and I don't necessarily respect his level of comedy. Like, when I read that, like, I read something that the scripts of the movies that we have seen, like Super Bad and Pineapple Express and this other stuff, it's like, yeah, I wrote this with my friend Evan when we were 12. I wrote this with my friend Evan when we were 15. I'm like, you're getting millions of dollars. You're a leading man using sophomoric base level dick joke humor. And it's, and you're clouding it with a bunch of pot stuff. Like, oh, just fuck you, man. Like, <laughs> I can't stand it. You know what's interesting though with you talking about like not liking the like it's society and the slacker thing but that's also the exact opposite of your personality you will work day and night <laughs> until your hands fall off and so the idea that people could not work hard or f- give the impression that they don't care about working hard and be successful that makes sense that you would hate that and like you work really hard uh, so well it's understandable I- Well, thank you. That's very nice of you to say. I I think that there may be a level to that. And also, uh, and I I think of life in in movies, like I think of life in soundtracks. I think like, I just, I always look at what's happening around us through the lens of if this were a movie or if this was a TV show, I just, that's my brain now. Um, Mm -hmm. Those loser dudes always get the girl. And that bugs me because it's one you do know loser dudes with awesome chicks pisses me off when I see it also, but it usually never happens that way. Like, uh, I don't know, man. I just, so and the it's, loser dude with awesome chick thing. Yes. But they, the, the chicks never stay. We have to learn those lessons the hard way. We will all go <laughs> through it and we will all think, no, this is different because it's interesting and fun. And then slowly you're like, oh my God, he doesn't own a couch or a bed frame. And then you realize like, you got to roll out. It takes every girl way too long to figure that out. But once you got to know where your baseline is, they're over that phase. You go through that phase once, once or twice where you're like, I know he doesn't really like have a job job, but like, he's really into, you know, Mario Kart. And like, and so you do it and (laughs) then you realize that was a dumb thing to do and you learn your lesson. (laughs) Well, yeah, I I definitely get what you're saying. Um, That makes sense. There's another just aspect of it that bugs me. And this is more core, like, comedian in me is you know some comics can get famous just saying you know how sometimes when you go out with an umbrella it doesn't rain and sometimes when you do when you don't go out with an umbrella it does rain like it's not even really a joke they're just absurd like it's just very basic level of observational humor Mm -hmm. and they're in theaters and they're just people couldn't be laughing harder and you're like that's such hacky oh I feel like he's gotten kind of a, a ride with that. Uh, I will say I don't hate him as much as I used to. Um, I got, cause like when he, when it was, again, this is probably like 2007, 2008, 2009, when it was like Seth Rogen, Jonah Hill, like every summer had another movie. Like I was kind of as a bigger guy uh, who did comedy, I was kind of lumped into that group of, uh, this is the kind of comic you should be, or this is the kind of comedy you should do. And I was like, I could what? Be any different than like, I would have former teachers reach out. Like I'd catch up with an old teacher and they're like, you know, I saw uh super bad. I you really, you remind me of that guy. I'm like, how, why? Cause I'm a big uh-huh. guy like, like, Oh dude, I just, 
there's a level of that. Uh, that's not to say I haven't enjoyed them. Like I said, Pineapple Express, I really, really thought was a good movie. Uh, I love Super Bad, but there's other movies where I'm like, this, like I couldn't even get through the movie where there are food. Uh, oh, Sausage Party. Sausage Party. Mm-hmm. No, thanks. I enjoyed the uh, religious symbolism of it. I did find that to be. <laughs> well, any, anytime you can bash religion, I'll, I'll be uh, on board with that. But uh, okay, so we're down to the number one picks celebrities we most irrationally hate your top five so far you've got property brothers guy fieri pioneer woman kelly clarkson your number one most hated celebrity for no reason who you got pink what i know pink i know it's not right and it's very similar to everything else I've said today, pretty much. There was beginning pink. And there was the I'm coming up and you in your hand and that like, yeah, like she's saying all this stuff. All like she was mad at Carrie Hart and we were all going to sing along to it. And it was epic, right? Mm-hmm. And then she found acrobatics. <laughs> And suddenly, all she can do is sing ballads and dangle from silks from the ceiling. And that's supposed to be enough, Pink. It's not. I'm sick of the ballads. (laughs) Write something angry. Do something (laughs) that doesn't hurt. I feel like she only writes songs now so that she can acrobat to them slowly. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, Yeah. I I cannot believe that that's your number one. Like that's Her new so music, funny. Dirk Dilla sucks. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> oh, oh, that makes me so happy that that's your number one. I would have never in a million years guessed that. Apparently, you don't like growth in people. Like you want. I know to it's stay. wrong. You're right. You were correct when you said that. Here's a this box. Is, Stay in this box. Don't probably, ever. That is a fair statement to make about me. And I don't understand why. I think, I think like you can be a, you can grow and become a different person, but I feel like you like, you know how like Eminem was angry, right? And <laughs> he was writing like the best angry stuff. Uh-huh. And Eminem is still angry now but it's boring anger. I think that's what's wrong with Pink too, is like, it's boring anger. Whatever's wrong, she's still upset. It's just slow now and boring upset. Uh, That is is hilarious. Uh, I have a couple of thoughts as to why you feel that way. Okay, Uh, go. First of all, the the boring, like the boring uh, Eminem, and pink and how they've grown into whatever. Uh, I think it's also like when you love a stand-up comic, like they're good until they get famous. And then when you're famous and you're more, not even just famous, but when you're rich, when you've made a lot of money, you've been successful in your career, whatever age you are, whatever age you are, when you get rich and famous, that's the age you stay for the rest of your life. Okay. Because all obstacles have been moved out of your way. Mm -hmm. So when you're, Chris Rock or, you know, Eddie Murphy or whatever. Those are bad examples because I think they're still both pretty funny. But there are examples of comics that their first couple of specials are hilarious. Because they're struggling. They're struggling. It took them 10 years to put that hour together. And then guess what? Writing jokes while sitting in your trailer on a movie set, your special's going to suck, you know? Right. It's, and I think you lose a bit of that edge. You lose a bit of that when you were hungry, when you were struggling. I think there's an element to that also why I don't, I mean, obviously I wouldn't fault you anyway, but I think what gives you a pass for the pink thing, because I can't get over that. This is consumption. This is purely entertainment. Like I'm, I want to listen to her music. It's kind of like saying, you know, yeah, Big Macs were better when I was a kid, Hmm. you know, like it's, they changed the recipe. They're not as big as they, like they did something different and now it's still called the same thing, but it's not the same thing. And I think from a purely consumption product 
standpoint, you're like, I no, I want my Big Mac to taste like this. I want Kelly Clarkson and Pink to sound like this. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does make sense. Yeah, I don't like it anymore. And I'm sorry. And I'm <laughs> like, again, I want her to be successful. I appreciate the, the her messages. I like, I like everything that she does for women, you know, like, yeah. But yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> wow, that's so funny. I, she never hears this. It comes and kicks my ass because I would deserve it. Well, the dozen of the dozen, the handful of listeners that will see this or, or listen to this will, I'm sure, pass the word along to her. Please don't tell Pink. That, can <laughs> oh. we name that this uh, this title, the Cassius podcast? Please don't tell Pink. <laughs> <laughs> With the exclamation point <laughs> so that they can e- more easily find it. <laughs> Uh, wow. I'm so glad that that's your number one. It could have been anybody. <laughs> could have been anybody. Did you, okay. Um, before I reveal my number one, did you have any honorable mentions? I feel like while we were having this conversation, I thought of one, but I can't remember it now. I'm sure there are plenty. Well, I thought of a, a few, like I said, I have honorable mentions because when I started thinking about it, I was like, no, nah, I, I hate a lot of people. <laughs> but the list of people that they deserve, like Andy Dick, deserves mm, to be hated. Enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's done enough shitty things that it's not irrational to hate him. Right. Uh, John Lovitz. Is he, is he no good? Uh, I, I hated him when I was younger. It's more of a befuddlement. Like, why do people think this guy's funny? Mm, mm-hmm. Like when okay. he was, there was a season of SNL I don't know. It was like maybe 85, 86. And he was king shit of Saturday Night Live for a season. And at the end of the season, there was talk that Saturday Night Live might get canceled. And so when they ran the credits of the cast, they put a question mark, like coming back next season, they listed everybody with a question mark next to their name, except for John Lovitz. Cause they're like, no matter what happens, he's coming back. And I'm like, why? Really? Like he yeah. was the one, he was the one. And look, you can't, if you can get a catchphrase, like that's the ticket and oh, you know, yeah. acting, whatever, uh, you know, uh, thespian. He had a couple of those. Yeah. But he you did. didn't change anyone's lives with those characters. Oh, and then Dana Carvey comes around in a couple of years and destroys like that's that is who your generational talent is, not John that's Lovitz. Yeah. So I agree but, with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also hate Busy Phillips and Candace Cameron Bure. I'm with you on the Candace. I understand the Busy, though uh, she's one of those again. I want her to do well, even though I struggle sometimes. It's only because of how she talks. Uh, it's she didn't make the list, but she's an honorable mention because the way her episode where she guest starred on uh, How I Met Your Mother, she plays Danica McKellar's friend, and mm-hmm. they're gonna have the threesome with Ted. The way she talks, I can't even just the way she talks, yeah. uh, I can't stand it. So, anyway, those are my honorable it. mentions. Nope. I get it. Okay, number one on my list, you're probably gonna give me shit for it. Uh, my Top five so far. I have Jenna Fisher, Chelsea Handler, Tom Brady, Seth Rogen. Number one most irrationally hated celebrity going away for me. Not even close. Laura Linney. Laura Linney? Yeah. The mom from Ozark. Wow. How interesting. Yeah. What is your reasoning? I wish I could give one. I wish I knew there's just something base level when I see her face and she starts talking. I can't, I have a theory about it, why I don't mm-hmm. like her. Cause I realized recently that she's the, uh, the wife in the Truman show. So yeah. I must have her linked in my mind with deception of a loved one because she tricked mm-hmm. Jim Carrey's Truman for whatever however long they were together uh like oh yeah she was really not a good person in that movie so i must maybe that's why i've hated her you know what though she actually has played quite a few characters where it's like a it's a odd character it's not a lovable character like i think um she was in love act 
actually remember she was the girl she was in love with that co-worker guy mm -hmm. and then she decided to stay with her brother instead or whatever and then ozark her character became really exhausting too like she plays a lot of exhausting characters there's nothing warm about her like i see her face i think goldfish like i do not cool. like the actual animal or the crackers cold Oh, oh, I thought you like, said goldfish. No, no, I don't think goldfish. That'd be really funny. You're like, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, no, cold, cold fish. Yes, cold Because she fish. just seems frigid. She just seems, mm. and I feel terrible because she may be very nice. I'm sure coworkers uh, or co-stars uh, have spoken highly of her. Nah. Can't you know what it. though like so i was a theater major for a hot minute and we were taught a lot about the warm and cool actor thing mm -hmm. where like i was the example is like a cool actor is like gwyneth paltrow and a warm actor is like sofia vergara right like those are extreme examples but like there are people who give off a level of warmth and there are people who pull it all in and both are valuable talents but i always struggled with the cool actors like i found it to be nothingness like i was always like scarlett johansson amazingly beautiful girl but I, but she's a cold actress right like in a lot of the stuff that she does she doesn't give out she pulls in and i, I wanted more of that you know like that warmth and that you know that energy that pulled you in if that makes sense yeah no i get that and, and I think well Laura Linney is the cool actor yeah she's taking all the warmth out of the room and hogging it for herself <laughs> So, okay, so uh, my top five, Jenna Fisher, Chelsea Handler, Tom Brady, Seth Rogen, Laura Linney. <laughs> That'd be a great uh, match game lineup. And your top five, Nikki's uh, most irrationally hated celebrities, Property Brothers, Guy Fieri, Pioneer Woman, and Top 40 Radios, Kelly Clarkson, and Pink. That is so funny. <laughs> I can't... <laughs> Uh, that couldn't have been more entertaining uh, if we tried. I can't believe that's your top five, but I can because <laughs> it's so specific and it makes all the sense in the world when it comes uh, to you. That's great. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, that does it for this episode. Uh, probably nobody watching at this point. Uh, Nikki, where can people follow you? Where, they, where can they find you? All that good stuff. Um, on Twitter and Facebook, it's at Nikki, N-I-K-K-I-W-Z-P-L. Uh, Instagram, Nikki Images, one word, because all the other good radio Nikki names were taken. And uh, I think that's probably the most important part. Or just tune in to 99.5 WZPL wherever streaming is possible. Or if you live in Indy, on the radio. Awesome. Thank you very much. You're welcome.